Okay, armed with that information, we are now able to see if we can find a fundamental value for length which depends only on those three constants. So we're going to say, is there a value for length which is some multiple of the gravitational constant times Planck's constant times the speed of light? And of course, these might have powers. So let's call this g to the power p, h bar to the power q, and c to the power r. And the question is, can we find out values for p, q, and r? Well, let's put in the dimensional values of these three terms raised to the powers p, q, and r. Let me show you what I mean. L to the power 1 is simply L. Now what did we have for G? That was L cubed over T squared M. But they've all got to be raised to the power P. So that becomes L to the 3P, T to the 2P, and M to the P. H bar had dimensions L squared, M divided by T. But all of that has to be raised to the power Q. So this is now L2Q, M to the Q, T to the Q. And finally C was in units of L over T, length over time, but that's got to be raised to the power R. So now we have a length term. This is what's called dimensional analysis. Now I remind you that if you have something like L to the power A times L to the power B, that is one and the same as L to the A plus B. Similarly, if you have L to the power A divided by L to the power B, that is L to the A minus B. And with that in, taking that into account, what we can do is we can say all these dimensions on both sides of the equal side must balance. In other words, L to the 1 must equal L to the 3P times L to the 2Q times L to the R. Similarly, the M and the T terms have got no equivalent values on this side. So if we do it in terms of the powers, what we can say is that looking first at all the L terms, on this side of the equation, we have the power 1. On this side of the equation, we have 3p plus 2q plus r. That's in terms of L. Now what about, say, m? Well, we've got nothing on this side here. So that's 0 in terms of powers. m to the power 0 is 1. On this side, we've got Q, and then the P at the bottom becomes minus P. And that, of course, tells us that P equals Q, whatever they turn out to be. Finally, if we look at time, again, there is no time term on this side of the equation, so 0 equals 2P plus Q plus R. 2p plus q plus r. And that has to be true if this is going to be dimensionally correct. And the question is, can we now work out the values of p, q and r? Well, we know that p equals q. So this term here can be rewritten for length 1 equals, well, 3p plus 2q is now, of course, 5p, because p equals q, plus r. And similarly here, in terms of time, 0 equals, well, 2p plus q is simply 3p plus r. And now we have two very simple simultaneous equations. We just subtract one from the other. 1 minus 0 is 1, 5p minus 3p is 2p, r minus r is 0. 
So 2p equals 1, p equals, that gives us p equals 1 half. So now we've worked out what p is. But p equals q. So we also know what q is, 1 half. Now all we have to do is to substitute in, say, this equation. So 3 halves plus r equals 0, because p is a half. Well, if 3 halves plus r equals 0, that must mean that r equals minus 3 halves. And now we can go back to the formula that we started with all the way back up here. L, in other words, a unit of length that's based on the fundamental constants, g to the power p, h to the power q, c to the power r, we now know what p, q and r are. p is a half, q is a half, and r is minus three halves. And so we can now say that the fundamental length equals g to the power half, times h bar to the power half, times c to the power minus three halves. Or writing that a little bit more neatly, you find that that is the square root of, because that's the half, times g times h bar over c cubed. And that is known as the Planck length. Now if you substitute in the values of g, h bar and c cubed, which we worked out earlier, and to simply put those into the equation, you will find that the Planck length turns out to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. That's a very small amount but it has been derived using only the three fundamental constants of g, the gravitational constant, c, the speed of light, and h bar, Planck's constant. So the question is, is there anything fundamental about a length of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters? Well, let's see if we can find a Planck time. What is time going to be? Well, this should be fairly easy. Time is simply distance divided by speed. So the Planck time will be the Planck length divided by the universal constant C. And if we calculate that by simply taking the Planck length, which we've already calculated, and dividing it by the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th, we shall get 5.4 times 10 to the minus 44 seconds. And that's a very, very small time indeed. And that's called the Planck time. In other words, it's a unit of time which equates to 5.4 times 10 to the minus 44 of our units of time, called seconds. But it has been derived entirely from the universal constants.